and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good start to their week. Mushtaba, Lydia, Andri, Eugen, Navneet, nice to see many of our students. Welcome members, hi for Dobbs. In this class, everyone, we are looking at the IELTS task to writing composition for a band nine score. And a, this is a question that was sent to us by one of our students. Hi, Carolina. Yarabisha, Nick Hill. Good to see more of our members as well. This lesson is pre uh, presented to you by aehelp.com. I always just kind of write this up here to emphasize where you need to go and you can see it throughout the lesson. Uh, for academic IELTS, check us out at aehelp.com. For general IELTS, check us out at uh, gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of help for your writing, as well as your speaking and the other sections, HD videos. We're world, le world leaders in IELTS test preparation. Uh, this is our academic website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. We're British Council registered IELTS um, registration center. And for the general IELTS go here, it's the green background uh, with uh, general IELTS materials. Click that big red button to join us there. We're also certified British Council agents as well. So you can ask us questions about the exam in English. You can send your questions to adrian at aehelp.com and I will get back to you or my colleague will get back to you uh, as quickly as possible. Students, just a little bit about the holiday schedule. So we have this task to class right now. Uh, and then um, we have uh, task one, task two tomorrow. Okay. So we'll finish the essay that we start with today and tomorrow's class. And then 24th to the 27th, there's no classes. And then I'm back on the 30th. And then again, a couple of days uh, break for the New Year's 31st and then back on this race. So that schedule is also on our YouTube community posts. Okay, everyone, uh, let's get into today's task two question. Hi, Arda. Hello, Beza. Welcome, everyone. Here we go. So you're uh, doing your exam. And at this point, uh, you're two hours into your exam, okay? So by the time you get to writing, you're two hours in, and uh, you should be feeling confident, calm, and still full of energy, okay? Don't be nervous. When you're nervous, you burn energy much faster. So staying calm uh, is a very, very good strategy. You want to be the turtle. Slow, steady step-by-step, step. methodical, methodical. The word methodical in English means that you're really thinking about what you're doing and you're reflecting on what you're doing, okay? Uh, yes, Ayush, you have to write at least 250 words in task two to get task completion. And most band seven, eight, nine essays are longer than 250 words, okay? So um, it's... Uh, rare to see band eight, nine essays that are just 250 words, okay? All right, um, so here we go with the question. Again, this was sent to us by one of our students. Let's take a look. So IELTS task two writing, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. At the present time, the population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? So are there more positives to this than negatives? Okay, that's, what's, that's, what, you're suppo that's what you're asked to answer. That's what you have to give your response for. So always be really careful about this last question here. Okay, and yeah, it's 250. I guess that's why somebody said, isn't that supposed to be 200? Yeah, it's my typo. 
It's at least 250 words, okay? So task one is 150. You need to write at least 250 words. Uh, keep in mind that most band seven to nine essays are closer to 300 words, okay? Uh, they're more expressive, they have more content, okay? All right, so it's an interesting question because uh, some um, because some countries, there's actually a lot of elderly people, okay? So there's a lot of elderly people and it's kind of the opposite, okay? All right, uh, first step, everyone, and this is not your essay yet. This is just your planning, okay? Your first step is planning. So step one plan your essay. It's very dangerous to just start writing your answer. Most students who just simply begin writing an answer do not get high bands, even if they have good English. So keep that in mind. Most candidates that write a task to response without planning do not perform well even with good English. And that's true even for native speakers and university students. So plan your essay, okay? It's really, really important. Step one of planning is paraphrase, okay? So A, uh, first paraphrase the question, which means write it in your own words to better understand it and to think about it, and gather useful vocabulary, okay? So go ahead and uh, paraphrase this question. So write it in your own words. I'm going to do the same, okay? Let's do this. So here's mine. I'm going to put it right underneath so you can compare it. Don't overthink it. So here's my uh, paraphrase, and then I'll look at some of the uh, paraphrasing from our students. Um, so here we go again, the original one at the present time. Here's my paraphrase currently, okay? The population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults. The number of people in certain nations is composed of a higher proportion of younger adults in comparison to the elderly. Okay, compared with the number of older people. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? Do the benefits of this context supersede the negatives? So this is a paraphrase of this. Will this get me a band nine? No, it won't. I can't just do this and use this for my introduction, okay? This is just still repeating the question. It's not actually answering any part of the question or not defining the question, okay? So remember, students, your goal isn't just to paraphrase, okay? Your ultimate goal is to define and answer the question, okay? Not just to repeat, okay? Paraphrasing is somewhat defining, but if you're just paraphrasing, then you're really just repeating, okay? All right, so let's take a look at what some of you wrote. I see some answers coming up. Carolina says, nowadays the majority of people in some nations are younger compared 
with the elderly. Do the benefits outweigh the drawbacks? Very nice, Carolina. Simple, elegant. I like it. Okay. Uh, Nikhil says, nowadays the inhabitants of certain nations contain myriads of youngsters compared to a number of elderly individuals. Uh, myriad is um, not correctly used there, Nick Hill. Myriad means many, but it means like many types. Okay, so careful. Uh, read a few examples of how myriad is used and the exact definition, Nick Hill. Careful. Myriad is not correctly used in that context. Okay. Rihan says nowadays. Rihan, Mahmoud, nowadays is one word. Okay, nowadays. Uh, proportionally, there is a large number of youth in some nations relative to older individuals. Okay, Rihan, not bad. Just watch your punctuation and uh, your spelling. Okay. Moria says, currently the number of people in some nations have uh, rather a large number of youngsters in comparison with the elderly. Yeah, careful with the word myriad, students. You can't just use it uh, in any context, meaning many. Okay, um, I'll give you an example. So in university, there is a myriad of subjects for students to choose from many different types of subjects. That's a myriad, okay? So careful with how you use it, all right? Words like myriad or plethora on their own will not get you a good band score, okay? And examiners tend to hear these words too often anyway. Okay, Lydia says, nowadays the inhabitants of several countries comprise a significant number of young adults compared with the number of elderly individuals. Do the pros of this overshadow the cons? Lydia, be very careful. Young adults and teens are not the same, okay? Uh, teens are 13 to 19. Young adults are 18 to 35, roughly, okay? All right. Hi, Ann. Um, Bechlul says, currently, this is Bechlul, it's cool, says, currently, the population, the young population in some countries override the older population. That is incorrect too, Bechlul. Override means to... Um, control or to uh, make the decisions instead of the older people. It's easy to misunderstand that. Uh, override a decision. You want to go to Disneyland and I override your decision because I want to go to Universal Studios. So because I override your decision, we go to Universal Studios because I supersede your decision. But supersede here in my paraphrase works override doesn't it's tricky i know but sometimes you can't paraphrase with some words okay so careful okay uh so here's my paraphrase currently the number of young people in certain nations is composed of a higher proportion of younger adults in comparison to the elderly do the benefits of this context supersede so notice how i'm using supersede Bechlul in this part of the question so i'm using it actually in a different part of the question as well, okay? Uh, override, you could use that here. So you could say, do the benefits of this context override the negatives? Supersede, override, that's where you could use it. Okay, Bechlul? All right, so good, we're paraphrasing, we're getting some ideas, we're getting some vocabulary. It's fantastic, all right? If I missed yours, don't worry about it. You'll have more chances to write sentences and I will review. Okay, um, so now um, we want to identify the topic. So identify the topic. Okay. And what is the topic? What are we talking about? Okay, what are we in fact talking about? Or who are we talking about? Very good, Carolina. So Carolina says we're talking about the population of some countries. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, 
Um, Yarabisha says, demographic, the demographic age distribution. Yeah, uh, we could talk, yeah, we could say that, Yarabisha. So the <clears throat> age distribution of countries. That's what we're talking about. Another, that's a type of demographic, right? And that's a part of the population, Carolina. So what we want to do is um, we want to specify the topic as much as possible. So we want to be accurate and concise. And what we're talking about here <clears throat> is the age, the age distribution, the number of old versus the number of young, or the proportion of old, the ratio of old versus young. That's the topic. Does everybody see that? Can I get some thumbs up? Or if you don't, can you ask me well, why or what? Um, so one more time, if you look at the question, okay. Population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. So we're talking about the age distribution of some countries. Does everybody agree with me that that is the topic? Okay, Carolina says, yep. All right. Okay. Very important, students, that you identify the topic of questions accurately. Okay. It's extremely important. Okay. If you can't, you're not going to be able to discuss it. You can't discuss an idea that you can't identify. Okay. So it is extremely important to accurately identify a topic before verbal or written discussion. Okay. Make sure to practice this. All right. Um, so what's the, what's the controlling idea? Okay. Now I see that a lot of people are like, okay, okay. Got it. All right. And he says, yeah. Um, Abhishek says, sir, can we say that it's the young and older population? Yeah, you kind of can, Abhishek. It's a definition of the age distribution. Okay. Yeah, Bekhul, it's the same. So you say young and old ratio or population ratio in some countries. Yeah, you can say that because you can, it's, that's simply a definition of age distribution, right? Age distribution is more concise. It's a more accurate identification, right? Okay. Yeah, Rihan, practice it. If you're in hot water to guess the topic, you shouldn't be guessing the topic. You should be identifying the topic. It's, it's not a guessing game. It's an identification game. Okay. All right. Um, so what's the controlling idea? Un says, is it more beneficial to have more young adults compared to old? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So is it better or worse to have a high ratio of young to old adults. Okay. So, sure. That is the controlling idea or the controlling question. Okay, now to generate those ideas, a couple of people are asking me like, uh, how do I generate some ideas? Okay. Yeah, and Carolina, I like how you're now using the exact quantitative information, right? Because we want to identify what we're really talking about here uh, later in the essay, certainly. Okay, so now uh, we want to ask some what, why, how questions. So now apply. So next step, we're still planning here, okay, um, is apply critical thinking to the topic and controlling idea. Simply uh, what I'm saying here is ask uh, what, why, and how about each. And so, okay, an example here is uh, what is the age distribution of a country? The answer here is simple. We're given the answer. So the answer is 
the number of children, uh, teenagers, adults, and elderly. To keep it simple, right? Within a country. Okay. So let's ask the next question then. Um, so why does a certain age distribution um, come into being? Let me try to simplify this for you. So why does a certain age distribution um, develop in a country? Okay, now I'm giving you the questions and that's making your life a little bit easier. But the big trick here is, of course, to think about questions on your own. So this question you should come up with in your mind when you're thinking about this essay. So you should think, okay, well, why does a certain age distribution, like why, why is there suddenly a lot of old people? Why is there suddenly a lot of younger people? So why are there these generational differences? What leads to that? Okay. So Abhishek, Abhishek says economic boost. Okay. Leads to more births, sure. Okay. Why else? Why else does a country have this? Uh, don't think about the answer yet to this question of uh, is it better or worse. Um, just think about why does the proportion, so the number of elderly or young or young adults um, differ. So why is it that in some countries there are a lot of elderly? Why is it in some countries there are a lot of um, young adults? Why is it that in some countries maybe there are a lot of children? Okay. So what leads to that? Okay. Uh, Lydia says better innovations. Be a little bit more specific, Lydia. Okay. Very good, Talika. So Talika Pacha says medical improvements. Okay. Yeah, medical improvements lead to longer lives and less disease. Okay. Um, Anna, living standards is the same as an economic boost leads to more births. If we're economically uh, strong, we have more food, we have more space, we can house more children. Yeah. Okay. So think simple here. Okay. We've, so we've got medical, we've got economy. There's some more. Okay. That should come uh, into mind as well. Okay. The opposites, right? War. Strife, famine, changes, proportions, okay? So if there's uh, some kind of conflict that can decrease the number of a certain demographic, right? A lot of uh, young people go to war, they die, or there's a poor economy, there's no medical help, elderly don't live as long. So the negatives are also true. Okay, and so... Now we can say, how oh, do different uh, proportions of age demographics affect uh, society? Okay, so instead of saying country, we're just going to say society. And again, what you really want to work on, students, is generating these questions. So you want to become master question generators, not answer generators. Keep that in mind, okay? That's a really important tip that I just dropped on you there, okay? So the best thinkers and authors uh, tend to be those who are not necessarily masters at generating good answers, but rather, they are masters at generating good questions. Keep this in mind uh, for success on IELTS and in life.
in general. Okay, so you want to generate good questions. And one way to do that initially is just generate lots of them. So just think of lots of questions. Keep the topic and the um, controlling ideas in mind, okay? So how do different proportions of age demographics affect society? Okay, Moria says employment, food, economy, good or bad, right? Moria, we don't know that yet, right? So uh, positively affecting um, food, economy, and um, what else are students saying here? Let's see. Mm, what else? What else? Uh, pension. Sure. Okay. All right. So positively or negatively. Competition is another one that comes to mind. Okay. Um, so what's another question that I should ask here? What's another question? So if I have this question, and just imagine like you're having a conversation with yourself. So how, so here's Adrian A and Adrian B discussing this topic and asking uh, these questions. So the question that Adrian A is asking is, how do different proportions of age demographics um, affect society? And then Adrian B says, well, Depending on the age demographic, there can be either positive or negative effects on the economy, on the food supply, on competition, on development. What do you think Adrian A is going to ask from Adrian B after this response from Adrian B? So if Adrian B gives this response, what do you think Adrian A is going to ask next? What would be my next logical question, next logical steps? No, Abhishek, it wouldn't be what are the benefits of a young population yet. Uh, no, Yar Abhishek, it wouldn't be an example. What's the most popular question that kids love to ask? There's my hint. I wouldn't say what are the negatives of young adults yet. So we still haven't put our thumb on the pulse. We haven't hit the nail on the head yet. Okay. Sundar, affecting doesn't have to be negative. No. Very good, Carolina. Very good on. So what do you think is the specific question here? So what is the specific question? You're on the right track. Osama, Lydia, you're on the right track. What's the full question? You're absolutely on the right track. Okay, so <clears throat> why do, right, why do certain demographics have either a positive or negative effect? Okay, yeah, so that would be uh, my question. Yeah, why? So Adrian A would say, well, why, why do certain uh, demographics? So you have to remember, it's like you're talking to an alien, right? Why do certain demographics have this? And then what do you think B will answer? So what will be the logical answer? So let me role play. And this is what you should do when you're developing your critical thinking. Lots and lots of role play. So Adrian A says, well, um, how do different proportions of age demographics Sorry, how do different proportions of age demographics affect society? And then Adrian B says, well, they can have either a positive or negative effect on food, economy, development, competition. And then Adrian A goes, hmm, that's interesting. And why do these different age demographics have either this positive or negative effect on society or on a country? What do you think Adrian B is going to answer to that? Okay, Anmal, I'm showing that to you right now, how you can generate ideas. Okay, so why is there this difference of positive or negative? Okay, keep it simple. If any of you studied flowers and plants in biology and learned about 
the source and sink concept of the plant world. You'll think about this, okay? So why? Okay, what's the difference? Think about babies, think about three-year-olds, four-year-olds, think about teenagers, think about 20, 25-year-old, think about a 35-year-old, think about a 75-year-old, okay? So Kolod, Kolod, sorry, Kolod Abdel Nasser says, because the youth have power and new ideas. Okay. Um, Sundar says, because of age differences, ability to work hard. Yes, let's try to simplify that because certain age groups are while other age groups are what are the missing words can anybody tell me that and then you'll have the right idea really pushing your thinking here so this would be adrian uh, b's answer here so adrian a says why do certain demographics have either a positive or negative effect and then adrian b here would say well because certain age groups are while other age groups are okay yarabisha you're close productive and uh Kolod is right as well consumer yeah those are the missing words good job put them together so Okay. That's just the reality of the world. All right. So certain people are producers while other uh, age groups are more consumers. Okay. And that's just the way it is. And who are uh, the uh, producers? They tend to be the young adults. So they tend to be the 20 to let's say 50, 55 year olds that have a high uh, productivity compared to consumption in most cases, okay? I know there are exceptions, but in most cases, we're keeping it simple here. So what I'm basically doing with this critical thinking is I'm looking at the question and I'm deconstructing it. My goal here is to come up with some basic fundamental concepts that allows me to write a powerful 250 to 300 word essay. So, This is the point I need to reach in my planning for task two so I can write a fluent, coherent, high band task two essay. I deconstruct. the question of task two into the basic fundamental ideas, okay? So no need to overthink it, okay? It's not a PhD that you're writing here, but you do need to come up with these concepts of producers and consumers, okay? So now, if I go back to the question, I should be able to answer this question, okay? So I have all of these questions before me now. I have a lot of thoughts around it. I go back and I read the original question and then I come up with my thesis statement. My thesis statement is the most important sentence of my essay. It tells my reader what I think, what I'm going to argue, what the direction of my essay is, okay? So here we go. At the present time, the population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? Okay. All right. So you could write this negatively too, but it's definitely, I think, easier to write on the positive side here. Okay. All right. So let's do the thesis statement based on our answers. Okay. 
looking for the thesis statement. When you have a thesis statement, just put a T in brackets so I know it's your thesis statement. It's not just a question or an answer to a different idea. Um, give me your thesis statement. Again, make your thesis statement direct. Let me know if you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages and let me know why. Okay, so basically your thesis statement is advantage or disadvantage because point one and point two. Okay, that's what I would like to see. All right. Carolina says the benefits of having a large number of young and adults in a nation relative really supersedes the drawbacks because individuals between 18 to 35 years old are more productive compared with the consumers. Okay, good. Carolina, I like it. So they're more productive. Can you give me another reason that the benefits are more? Okay. All right. Uh, Muhabat. Um, youths are hardworking compared to elders. Okay. Good. All right. Let's see some clear thesis statements. I'm going to write mine. Try not to cheat. Okay. So here, I don't think it's asking for my personal opinion here. It's no personal opinion. So it's going to be a third person essay. Okay. Okay. J15, we're working on a task two essay introduction. We just got through most of the planning and now we're starting to write our introductory paragraph. Okay, so show me the thesis, students. Okay, all right. So, All right. An says, in my opinion, having more adults is more beneficial compared to other groups because they are more productive and more adaptable. Okay, very close, Un, to my uh, response as well. Very good, okay? Uh, don't use the word huge. So the uh, great advantage of a young population being more than elders um, is they are more energetic and, um, okay, so you're talking about productive with energetic in a different way. All right. Uh, Lubna says in most nations, the youth to elderly population ratio is two to one since 18 to 35 year old, uh, or age people, the producers of the ec economy while 40 to 65 are the consumers. Um, okay. So you're identifying the age group. Uh, Lubna, it's not really a thesis. It's more your definition for your introduction. Okay. Ferdov says, outweighing the number of young uh, generation than elderly in certain countries, the positive trend increases with economic activity and development. Ferdov, it's a little bit awkward. There's um, definitely content confusion at the beginning. It sounds like you're saying, there should be more elderly than young people. So rethink that for Dobbs. You need to rewrite that uh, thesis statement. Okay. All right. Lynn says, uh, I will consider this positive because youth are more capable of working and producing actively than elderly people. Um, okay, Lynn, not bad. Don't use future tense will, and it's not a first person essay. It's not asking for your opinion. Okay. All right. Okay, so here is my uh, thesis statement. So the advantages of having a large proportion of young adults age 20 to 45 in a country supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity 
and development, okay? So productivity, able to give more services, uh, produce more goods, and development means produce uh, families and new technology, new innovation and information, okay? So productivity and development here are going to be two unique ideas in my body paragraphs, right? So productivity is simply products and services, and development is innovation technology and the next generation of families, right? Hopefully they'll have many more children so that nation can prosper and grow, all right? Okay. All right. Uh, Shahib Jeet is asking, how can I enhance my brainstorming ability? Shahib Jeet, watch the first part of this lesson if you missed it. Okay, that's exactly what it was about. All right, so now uh, we have the thesis. Now we can write our introductory paragraph. Okay, introduction. The introduction has three parts. It has a hook, a background, and the thesis that we just wrote. Okay, so we're done with the thesis. Um, now, some of you are probably thinking, why did he write the thesis first? Uh, the thesis is the foundation. It's the epicenter of my essay, okay? The background, the hook, I can come up with quickly once I have a good thesis, all right? Um, so let's write the hook. For the hook, just uh, write the letter H, okay? The hook is an interesting statement with the topic, okay? Um, short, 10 words. All right. Uh, remember the topic. We have that now. It's clear. Okay. So it's the age distribution of countries. Okay. So write a hook. Compare it to mine. All right, there is my hook, okay? Uh, the hook, like a fishing hook, okay? Fishing hook has a little worm on it, poor little worm. Um, and the goal is to um, catch your reader, okay? That's your reader, the fish, okay? Uh, here's your wormy. Oh, don't eat me. Ooh. Worm is not so happy. Um, and... Uh, your hook is meant to catch the reader and introduce the topic. Okay? Topic catches the reader with an interesting fact. All right? Okay? So this is the lead-in for your essay. Some uh, IELTS teachers say, oh, you don't need a hook for task two. Yeah, you don't need one. You don't need a hook for any essay. Uh, but if you want to get a high band score, if you want to have good writing, you should have a hook. Good writing usually does. Okay? All right? So, um, okay. So here's my hook. The age demographic of a country has a direct effect on its prosperity. Okay? So depending on the ratio of old to young to babies um, will have an impact on whether or not that country is wealthy or poor living a high quality of life or living a low quality of life, okay, all right? So that's my hook, all right? Darpan says, Darpan Dahal says, the well-being of a country depends on the number of adults mm -hmm. relative to children and elderly. I would finish that, Darpan, with relative to children and elderly. It would be a little bit more accurate, but I think it's good, Darpan. I think it's good. It's a good hook, okay? Lydia says different countries have different numbers of age groups ranging from 0 to 80. Yeah, okay, Lydia. I probably wouldn't go into quantitative information in the hook. Um, a hook is usually qualitative. I've never talked about that, Lydia, but a hook is, I mean, you can say millions of, something like that, but I wouldn't make it too quantitative, okay? People are more emotional, so you want the hook um, to uh, speak more to their pathos than their logos, if you're into Greek rhetoric, okay? 
Ferdov says many developing countries have a large population of young. Period. Ferdov's. I adjusted it a bit for it to be a bit better. Okay. Lynn says in some countries the number of youth are more than the elderly. Period. Yep. Don't abbreviate people. Just write it, people. Okay. All right. Jassy says also give some advice on reading. Ah, uh, yeah, Jassy, that will be in a reading class. Can't do it all. Okay, in one class. So that will be a reading class. Okay, these classes are regular, so uh, just uh, tune in each week, and I'm sure you'll catch one that's about reading. Okay. Uh, Maloth says, the youth is the future of every nation. I love it, Maloth. I think that's a fantastic hook. Youth is the future of every nation. Beautiful hook. Beautiful hook. Okay. It's a bit opinionated, but the topic is there. You're talking age demographic, and you're targeting and it's a powerful sentence. I like it. Okay. Um, okay. So now comes the background. So background is uh, the definitions. Definitions and importance. So basically another way to think about it is what are you writing about and why? Okay, so that's what your background is. And the background should be in the IELTS, one, two sentences at most, all right? Uh, don't spend too much time there. You've got to get the body paragraphs and the conclusion. So, But you definitely want to tell your reader, like, what are you writing about and why are you writing about it? Okay, so... Okay, so what are we writing about? Most countries categorize their age populations as children, teenagers, young adults, adults, and elderly. And now, I'm going to give a little bit of numbers because that will help, okay? So... Yeah, let's go 18 to 40. I'm 40, so I want to consider myself a young adult <laughs> for one more year. But you could write 35. I'm just being selfish. Okay, and elderly. Um, elderly. Okay, 60 and over. It's a fair, fair assumption. Most people don't work like they used to after the age of 60. Some people are still very hardworking, of course. I don't want to undermine that. But, I mean, arguably, most people at 60 start to take it a bit easier. Okay, all right. So uh, here we go. So, so far we have the uh, definition. Now we want to talk about the importance of the question. So why is it uh, important to uh, discuss this? Okay. It's kind of in my hook already. So the age demographic of a country has a direct effect on its prosperity. Most countries categorize their age population as children, teenagers, young adults, 18 to 40, mature adults, and elderly, 60 and over. Okay. Uh, you know what? For the importance, I am going to um, use a little bit of my planning here. And I'm going to write... There. So I'll add in one more sentence. Sure. Different age groups have different capacities, abilities to ensure the growth and prosperity of their nation. And then now, simply, I'm just going to uh, type in my thesis. Okay. And my thesis here is this. Okay. I already wrote it. So all I need to do is just put it in here. 
Okay, let me get this introduction to the next line so you can kind of see it all in one eye shot. Okay, so there is my introductory uh, paragraph. Okay, <laughs> Paula says, I'm 42, I still feel young. Yeah, we won't own up to it, but Paula, to be honest with you, I'm definitely not 25 anymore. I couldn't do the work that I did when I was 25. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, let's do this. So introduction with a hook, background, and a thesis. Okay, all right. Check it out. The age demographic of a country has a direct effect on its prosperity. Most countries categorize their age populations as children, teenagers, young adults, mature adults, and elderly, 60 and over. Different age groups have different capacities to ensure the growth and prosperity of their nation. The advantages of having a large population of young adults, age 20 to 45, in a country uh, supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity and development. So now I can take out this part because I've defined it, right? And I don't want to define it differently than before. So there we go. I've removed that because I have it here. Okay, so the advantages of having a large population of young adults in a country supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity and development. All right, good. So there it is. That's my introductory paragraph. That will get me on path to not only a band nine, but also to some fluent writing for body paragraph one, two, and the conclusion. Okay, so hopefully you can come up with this. How did I do it? Uh, all these steps. Okay, and when you practice these steps that I showed you uh, from the question, the paraphrasing, the critical thinking, you can do it very quickly. Okay, you can come up with this in a matter of a few minutes, three, four minutes. You can do this, but you do have to practice this at home. All right, uh, students, tomorrow we will continue with body paragraph one, two, and the conclusion, and I will show you how to write that step by step. Uh, so make sure that you join me for tomorrow's class to complete uh, this essay. Okay, I will be back at the same time. And uh, to learn lots more and get lots more help and practice, go to aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS where we got loads and loads of help one-time payment, lifetime access, well worth it. You're welcome for Dobbs, Nick Hill, Abhishek, Yara, Bisha, Carolina. Good to see all of our members in a row. Wow. Um, you're very welcome, Natalie. I'm glad you found us too. Kalad, you're welcome. Have a great rest of your day if it's late in your country. Sweet dreams, everyone. I'm Adrian, signing out from Central Europe for now. Bye.